welcome to my brain. I am Jennifer Bennett and this is Marketing with the Misses. Today is the last day in September and that means we have a little over a month until the November presidential elections. Eek! Yikes! That, combined with the fact that 2020 has been a nightmare you can't wake up from, means that there's always something happening in the news right now. Whether it's coronavirus or quarantine or Jeffrey Epstein and Epstein Island, murder hornets, riots, civil unrest, space tarantulas. Okay, I made up that last one. Or did I? No one can debate the idea that 2020 has been miserable for nearly everyone. But some good things did happen. Zoom became a household name. It saved a lot of business owners from having to shut their doors by allowing employees to conduct business from their lazy boys. Score! I mean, we had heard of Zoom before the quarantine, but now a whole new crop of people were using it. And the same thing happened with TikTok. Now, was it around before? Sure, since 2017, actually. But it wasn't making headlines until recently. Now, businesses are relying heavily on social media marketing to help stay afloat these days, attempting to connect and affect customers and consumers they can no longer go out and sell to. With so many people quarantined to their homes and glued to their phones, they are indeed a captive audience on social media. But with everything that is going on in the country right now, our social media playgrounds have turned into a little more like battlefields. You know, lots of arguing, discourse, unfollowing, unfriending. People are getting sick of it and they need a change of scenery. Enter TikTok. Okay, a quick TikTok rundown. It's a social media app that deals in short form video content, 60 seconds. Now, being the youngest major social media platform out there, it has blown up the fastest, biggest swell in history. A little perspective? Okay, in Facebook's first year, 1 million users. TikTok's first year, 100 million users. With over 1 billion, with a B, views every day. Up until this year, it was primarily pushed as a site for teens and 20-nothings, but In true party crashing tradition, the adults have come to see what all the fun is about. And as of March 2020, 400 million of TikTok's users are people over the age of 35. (laughs) It's like finding out a high school student is throwing a house party. And instead of calling the cops on them and breaking it up, we decide to crash the party, commandeer the CD player, and embarrass the crap out of our kids with our smooth dance moves. TikTok is so well received by people because it was actually something different in a time when Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and all of those seem to kind of bleed into each other. The algorithm is so unique. It's AI technology that learns from your choices, truly, and it is generally more positive and it connects people together, not just your friends, but for people all over the globe. And all of these short form videos, these small bites, are being consumed at record rates. Now, the popularity of TikTok didn't sit too well with Big Daddy Zuckerberg. And when he found out he couldn't buy his competition, he decided to do some dirt digging on it. And oh, he found some dirt. And he was happy to share it on his platform. And that caught the attention of the U.S. government namely President Trump. You had me a Chinese owned. So yes, TikTok is owned by a parent company called ByteDance, and they are, in fact, Chinese owned. But for the record, so is Zoom. Zoom is not a direct competition to the big daddy Zuckerberg, so I guess we're just gonna ignore it? Back to TikTok and President Trump. Trump's always had a bug up his butt about China. So the U.S. launched an investigation into TikTok and found out that they were up to some serious privacy breaching and censoring shenanigans, you know, mostly because 
China. We found out that TikTok was getting information like names, email addresses, app preferences, and network and hardware information. And they got their hands slapped, rightfully so, for doing this to children or under the age of 18 minors without getting parental consent. So on August 6th, in lockstep with President Trump's quest to make America great again, an executive order was put forth declaring TikTok a security threat and banning it from being downloaded in America by way of Apple stores and Google Play. There was, this was to be effective September 27th at midnight. How very dramatic. This caused an uproar with the American people. President Trump is the official fun police. Well, because America is such a drama queen, a federal judge stepped in just four hours before the ban was to take effect and issued a preliminary injunction to stave off the ban. A collective sigh of relief from the millennial and Gen Zers reverberates across the land. Why the injunction? Well, in part because the judge felt that President Trump may have overstepped his authority just a smidge. Now, this judge's ruling does not affect a second order, actually, that Trump signed requiring bike dance to sell off TikTok to the United States. Now, that order still stands and has a November 12th deadline. Now, TikTok has been working hard with the uh, government to get a deal approved that would create a new entity TikTok Global, that includes investments from Oracle and Walmart, American companies. Now, the app is hoping that this will satisfy regulators' national security concerns by separating a bit from the Chinese parent company, ByteDance. Donald Trump and the White House seem to have given their blessing on this proposed deal, but there's still a catch. Bike dance needs to give up TikTok's magical algorithm. And China needs to give up control. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. So right now, a deal has been penned, and it's sitting on China's desk. And despite having a looming November 12th deadline, they are in no damned hurry. Get your crap together, China! The fate of TikTok is still up in the air. But for now, we can continue to dance on. Now, this story does introduce the issues of privacy in social media and app usage, though. Gathering user data with or without your knowledge is not new. And actually, it's very quite commonplace here in America. Guess what, guys? Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of them do this. Remember watching 15 eye-bleeding hours of Mark Zuckerberg testifying before Congress recently? And honestly, most of Americans don't really care. I mean, we say we do, but we give up our information all the time. Every time you play those survey games where you have to fill out, you know, but what high school did you attend? What year did you graduate? Uh, what's your mother's maiden name? What's your favorite pet? When's your anniversary? All the times that you do that, you are giving up your data. And you are cluing hackers in and to what your, as to what your possible passwords might be. In fact, Facebook and LinkedIn are collecting a lot more than that every time you log into their apps. For a horrifying list of all that, plus a detailed history of the rise of TikTok and the role Big Daddy Zucky plays in the whole story, you should check out a webinar that my husband, B. Zachary Bennett, did on using TikTok for business. He goes into an in-depth uh, analysis about social media privacy regulations. It's a great seminar for those of you who feel like you're always being watched. Because you are. I love TikTok personally. Now I'm more of a viewer than a content creator, though. But businesses are also getting in on the action. I mean, just like other social media platforms, there are ways to use TikTok for business. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, there are three reasons. Number one, to get in on the ground floor. I mean, since the platform is so new, there is little to no saturation when it comes to competing with other businesses. 
And since marketing is all about going where your peoples are, and statistically speaking, with 2 billion downloads in, as of April, your people are probably on TikTok. Number two, get access to marketing your business to the elusive millennial and Gen Z generation. These guys get tired of things so easily, so they're always on the move to what technology is new. And TikTok right now is where it's at. Show them that your brand is no stick in the mud. And by saying stick in the mud, I've proven that I am in, indeed a stick in the mud. Number three, TikTok has changed the social media playground and broke records in growth and participation. So no matter what happens to TikTok, the model is surely to be repeated by the next big thing. So if TikTok sinks and those influencers and users jump ship to the next platform, you will be right along there with them without missing a beat. So look into packing up your products and services and join the party. I mean, there's plenty of room for now and we're having a blast. Do you need tips on how to use TikTok for business? Again, you should check out Zachary's seminar. He goes through it step by step so that you can hit the ground running. All you need to do is go to bzacharybennett.com forward slash events. I'll put it right down here below. And check out TikTok slash IG Reels for Business. You won't be sorry. You'll get a lot of great information there. Now that pretty much should catch you up to speed on the whole TikTok drama. So that is all I can give you for today. But I will be here again next week, so I hope that you will join me then. If you're watching this on the YouTubes, click the little bell to be reminded of new episodes. And also, click like and subscribe to boost my self-esteem just a pinch. Until next time, stay healthy, stay positive, and get back to work. Bye.